Good morning. Welcome. I'm Jillian Davies, the incumbent priest of Salt Spring Anglican Parish. Welcome to all of you as we dwell together in this beautiful world. Separated on the physical realm, we are united in the spirit. We gather in these times that are not like before and we find our way forward into our new world. We gather in our tradition, stitching together the old and the new. Thanks be to God. We acknowledge with gratitude for thousands of years the Coast Salish peoples have walked gently on these unceded territories where we now live, work, worship and play. We seek a new relationship with the First Peoples here, one based in honour and respect. We lift up the Elders, past and present, may they be honoured and blessed. And we thank the people of this place for their hospitality. Oh. 
of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God of liberation, who comes not to destroy but to set us free, bring wholeness to all that is broken, and speak truth to us in our confusion. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You know what's happening in the temple that day? What the people are encountering? Truth. They're encountering the word of God 
what they were used to was this, scribes and scholars repeating to them what their teachers taught them, which is what Moses taught his people, and so on and so on, down through generation after generation till it arrived in the temple of that day. It was familiar, and over the centuries, probably somewhat diluted from what Moses actually said. No doubt, over the decades, human needs and social mores had crept into the teachings. I expect there were justifications for hierarchical structures and societal inequities. There would be all kinds of rules and guidelines that would have generally gradually slipped into their teaching. You know, institutional injustice. And it would have sounded familiar and non-threatening. And then Jesus walks in, reads the Torah, and begins to tell them what it really means. Shazam! Being confronted with truth like that is earth-shaking. It is, as the text says, astounding. Coming face to face with the truth leaves no cell in your body untouched. It's a wake up moment to shatter all kinds of comfortable assumptions and it calls for a decision. Because in order to let that kind of truth into our lives, something has to die within us. Something old has to let go and slip away or burn away, or break away with a loud shout, like the unclean spirit did, forced out. So we have to decide, will we let go of our comfortable illusions and assumptions? Sometimes those things that need to die to make room for the truth to move in are not what we want to let go of. Sometimes those things that need to die to make room for the truth are outside us in our society. Those are hard ones to pin down and hard ones to confront. And we know our society doesn't want to let go of them. And then we have to decide, are we going to take a stand for the truth? The other day, I listened to a woman I know tell the story of life with a Down syndrome baby who grew into a child and then eventually an adult. She told of how after her baby was born, all the experts and authorities back then were telling her what her child would never be able to do. But no one was telling her the kind of truth Jesus would have offered, what her child could do. So she searched and she researched and she wrote letters to people all over the world, authorities and specialists, and no one had the truth she needed. So she figured it out on her own. She took her own fierce love and found what her child could do. That was the truth she needed. And I think of the four young women who started the movement of Idol No More, confronted with one more unfortunate legislation from the federal government impacting indigenous people and the earth, sea and sky. They started the movement. Their names are Nina Wilson, Sylvia McAdam, Jessica Gordon, and Sheila McLean. They said, enough of this shadow nonsense. We won't sit still for it anymore. And they spoke up for truth. I can imagine Jesus smiling over their shoulders as they lit up our country and the world really with their work and continue to do. They are working for truth because the truth, besides being personal, is also communal. It knits us together when we commit ourselves to it. And truth bears witness to itself. It shows us how it is wrong to treat any person as a thing or unworthy of respect. As one writer put it, it is wrong to treat anyone as disposable to see anyone only in terms of our plans and ambitions. The last hundred years have been filled with just such abuse in many places around the globe. Sometimes this degradation of the human person is brought about by a totalitarian state. Sometimes it is the work of terrorists who show no pity. 
Sometimes it occurs through economic and social systems that reject the least successful. Jesus is truth. Yet even that is more complex and complicated than our minds can encompass. We can encounter truth and yet not quite know what it means or what it asks of us. Often it will require careful listening and prayer and patient waiting for the implications to be revealed. Another of my colleagues tells the story of someone coming to him to ask for a blessing. The secretary, the church secretary, told him over the intercom that a young man, not of the congregation, wanted a blessing from the priest. Just a blessing, that's all. My colleague, Buddy, figured he knew what this was really about. Someone wanting a handout, some money, some food, a place to stay. But when the young man comes into his office, he sees someone neat and clean with a warm smile, no glassy eyes or other signs of addiction. The young man says, I have a devil on my back. And no matter what I do, I can't get rid of it. I think a blessing from a priest would do the job. My friend explained that he wasn't a faith healer, but the young man wasn't worried about that. He just wanted a blessing. So Buddy asked him his name, Andy. And Andy knelt down in front of him. And Buddy prayed for him. Thank you to God for Andy's life. And asked that God remove whatever devil might prevent Andy from being the kind of person God intended him to be. He concluded with an amen. And Andy got up, thanked him, and left. And he always wondered, he always wondered, but we can guess, right? Truth was in Buddy's words. Truth was in Andy's heart. Truth was alive and personal and communal and present. For it's in the heart that we can begin to encompass what truth is. It's in the heart that we recognize Jesus when we meet him or her. The heart knows and will tell us when we are in the presence of the Holy of Holies, God with us, Jesus, truth. We are so blessed. Amen. Peace for the children, peace, peace. Peace for the children, we pray. Peace for the children, peace, peace for the children, peace, peace for the children, peace, we pray. Peace for the children, we pray. we pray. Peace for the nations, peace, peace. Peace for the nations, we pray. Following the path of one of these, we work for healing, we work for peace. Peace for the nations to
From the rising of the sun to its setting, let us pray to the giver of light. May all your people throughout the world worship in spirit and in truth. This week, we pray especially for the households of Pam and Tony Brentnell, Tony and Helen Bruce, Beverly Byron, Denise Calderwood, and Sally Carr. Giver of light, shine upon all you have made. May the church discover that unity, which is your will. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of the Egregia Episcopal Anglicana do Glossil. In the Anglican Church of Canada, we pray for our primate Linda Nichols and for our national indigenous archbishop, Mark MacDonald, and for the provincial synod of the ecclesiastical province of Canada. In our ecclesiastical province, we pray for the people of the Diocese of Yukon and Leslie Wheeler Dame, their bishop. In our diocese, we pray for Anna, our bishop, and for the congregation of St. John Galbert in Port McNeil. And on our island, we pray for the people of the Community Gospel Chapel and Micah Bergen, their pastor. Giver of light, shine upon all you have made. May the nations of the earth seek after the ways that make for peace. Giver of light, shine upon all you have made. May the whole creation groaning in travail be set free to enjoy the glorious liberty of the children of God. During these challenging times, we pray for all those who are suffering the many adverse effects of this pandemic, both physical and mental those suffering from grief, depression, anxiety, and all forms of anguish. Holy Father, we pray that your spirit can be with these people and fill them with hope for a kinder future. We pray especially for Michael Overholt, Tony and Pam Brentnell, Betty Rothwell, Alan Rita Robertson, Mark McDonald and his wife, Virginia Shaylin, Ruth and Louie Pepin, Michael Pigeon and Richard Stetson, Margaret Woldridge, and Nancy Holcroft. Giver of life, shine upon all you have made. May all who with Christ have entered the shadow of death rest in peace and rise in glory. We give thanks for the life of Sue Savage. May she be surrounded in light as she rests in God's loving arms. Giver of life, shine upon all you have made. Let us join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the blessing of God Almighty, source of all being, eternal word, and Holy Spirit, be with you and remain among you always.
go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit.